Mike, Mike Tannenbaum. It's the Michael K. Show here on 98.7 ESPN. We're taking it right up until 6.30. Greg Buttle and myself have Jet pregame. It'll be the Jets and the Eagles in the preseason opener for the green and white. But... We're talking baseball right now as we switch gears. And the Yankees and the Red Sox going to kick off a series tonight at Fenway Park on Sunday night. On uh, Sunday Night Baseball, of course, it will be the Yanks and the Red Sox. And it's another edition of the K-Rod cast. And Michael and Alex are going to be joined by none other than the captain, Derek Jeter. He will be in studio with the guys for the Yankee-Red Sox game. Certainly knows his thing, or certainly knows his way around the whole Yankee-Red Sox rivalry. So that should be cool to watch. And right now, we are joined by the man himself, the guy whose name is on this show, this very program and it is Michael K. Michael, thanks for hopping on your own show, my friend. How are you? Great, Dan. Great, Mike. How you doing? And Dan, by the way, congratulations on the new gig at seven o'clock. Thank you, thank you, Michael. It's very excited. Feels great to be coming home again. Many moons ago, started on this show. As a matter of fact, for those that didn't know that, how about that, right? That's right. Long time ago. Very, very long time. How's your vacation? How's your time off? Are you recharging the batteries? Is everything okay? You know what? I actually am. It's been nice, and uh, looking forward to getting back shortly. But uh, here at Fenway Park right now, looking at the Red Sox take infield, says two teams uh, struggling right now. Be interesting to see which one gets right. By the way, Mike, we've had a, a lot of fun this week trying to figure out exactly where you guys are. A lot of reason speculation was uh, Peru. You know, you took your crew on a you know retreat, much like the way Aaron Rodgers has. And we're just curious. You know, was it okay? You know, making a seamless transition to get back from. Peru into Boston, and curious to know how it went down there. Was that a blunt? <laughs> well, the, the, hard, the hard part, Mike, was the the ayahuasca. You know, because uh, <laughs> Rogers actually recommended that. But uh, yeah, we've been on many, many places. But there have been a lot of rumors, Mike. I don't know if you've heard them. I'm in a contract dispute. I don't like Don and Peter. Uh, I'm trying to get rid of them. That's why I haven't been working. So you pick the one you want. I'm just saying. Simply put, vacation. But people like those like little stories, so we're gonna go with it. Right, you know, like you and Tom Brady. Brady goes away for eleven days. A lot of speculation. We talked about on Get Up this morning. You know, was he gonna go try to find Gronk? Is he, you know, him and Giselle having, you know, a dispute? Like, you know, so I, I can see why you don't like Don. I, I, I've been like Don for about two decades, so I, I'm, I, that I can see you picking that box. <laughs> you know what, though, Mike? You say that Dan will throw down. Dan and Don are very close. Got to stick up for my guy, you know what I'm saying? I got I to gotta stick up for him, but, you know. Um, what about this Yankee team? Um, they're not exactly playing their best baseball. I think that that would be putting it mildly. Could possibly injecting themselves back into this Red Sox rivalry be the cure for that, Michael? You know what? I guess that's the way that you have to hope. Uh, so many aspects of what they're doing not working, but the biggest thing is that it's really hard to put your finger on why. All the games that they won in the late innings, at the beginning of the year when they got up to that record-setting start, they're not winning those games anymore. I mean, if they were down one nothing in the eighth inning, you just knew they were going to win in the first three months of the season, and now you just have a feeling that they're going to lose. And uh, I mean, the injuries to Stanton uh, and, and then Rizzo losing him for five games, those are big, but Stanton's a big part of this. And, you know, the bottom part of that order is not as scary as the top part. If it wasn't for Aaron Judge, they'd be even, even in a worse shape than they are right now. So the pitching is not done well when they score runs. And when the pitchers pitch well, they don't score runs. And that's a sign right now of a team that's struggling. But uh, all the components that made them really, really good the first three months still there. But they've got to, they've got to find them and put them together again. Mike, one thing we talked about all week was uh, now that we're past the trade deadline, how, how can they improve this team? And Aaron Boone came out and he was very strong about Montas moving forward. But do you see any other avenues for them to uh, pursue to try to get better between now and the end of the year? You know, with the, with the new trade deadline rules, Mike, you know, you're almost hamstrung as an organization. The only way you can do it is pick up somebody that's released. Uh, and usually if somebody's released, they're not going to be that great of a player anyway. Uh, the, the only other thing I can think of is that somebody goes on the IL. Uh, if one of the pitchers goes on the, the IL, then you could call up Ron Marinaccio and, and, and Clark Schmidt, who pitched a you know, seven-inning or six-inning perfect game yesterday in the minors. Those are the things that, that's left for them to do. Otherwise, what they have is what they have, and they just have to play better. It's just weird, though. The one thing that I would, you know, wonder about that they're doing, they're holding on to Albert Bray, who has filthy stuff, but he's really struggled, and he's lost two games for them himself. Those are games that Ron Marinaccio should have been pitching, but they're afraid to send down to Bray, because, you know, they don't have any options. So uh, if they send him down, then every other team could, 
could possibly put in a claim. But if, I, if I'm the Yankees, I would just say he's already been designated for assignment two other times this year, and the Yankees still were able to get him. So if they love him that much, maybe that would happen. If not, you hate to say this, Mike, because you don't want to say this stuff out loud, but then somebody has to fake an injury because this team is better with Ron Marinaccio up in the, on the Major League roster right now. It goes without saying. And fans, I think, have lost patience with Abreu. I mean, f let's face facts, Michael. I think that, you know, enough is enough. And because of the option situation, like you said, that's the only reason that he's up here right now. But doesn't mean he keep trotting him out there. And I even asked Aaron Boone yesterday when we had him on in his weekly spot about, you know, that matchup against Carlos Santana the other day that Santana ended up getting the better of hitting the home run. I mean, Carlos was 0 for 17 coming up at that point. So, you know, maybe Aaron Boone playing a hunch a little bit, saying, all right, I'm throwing him up there against the guy who's struggling, maybe this is a chance for him to get right, but couldn't even get the job done there. And, and what it comes down to, I always say this, and it's really hard to articulate, but every single baseball game kind of integrates with the other. They're all, like, locked in. So the previous game, the Yankees used their entire bullpen. Right. They didn't have anybody else to go to there, so they had to go to Abreu or keep a very tiring uh, Nestor Cortez, who I thought pitched very well, keep him in the game, but... They go to Abreu, and he, this guy, you can see when he was at Kansas City and before that Texas, that if he does not have his confidence, I don't care if he throws 100 miles an hour, he does not pitch as well. I think right now his confidence is not there. His location then goes away, and you can give up a home run even if you throw 100 miles an hour. So that, that's a little bit of an issue right now, and I know it angers a lot of Yankee fans. What are you playing You know the, the option game? You should have your best team on the field right now. And the best team on the field would be Ron Marinaccio coming out of the bullpen. And I'm not making Marinaccio out to be Dennis Eckersley in his prime, but Marinaccio, I think, has allowed one run in his last 17 appearances, and that's better than Abreu. And you're, you're trying to win games right now. The only thing the Yankees have to fall back on is that the Blue Jays have played poorly, too, so they haven't really carved into their lead. It's, uh, it's nine games in the loss column. Um, there's some games left to go, but it would be very hard for Toronto to come back. But you've got to get back on a winning streak, and – and I think that Marinaccio is better served doing that than, than Abreu at this point. Speaking of which, Michael, uh, besides the Astros, um, is it, who who do you think would give the Yankees a, a, a tough matchup, you know, come from the playoffs? <sighs> Obviously, I mean, if you're going for the, you know, the World Series as well, I think the Dodgers and the Mets would give them a lot of problems. The Dodgers are just are close to a complete team. The Mets, if they have DeGrom and Scherzer, Nobody wants to face them in a short series. In the American League, I never, ever go to sleep on, on Tampa Bay. Uh, they've got the magic potion, and if they start getting their players back, that's a team I, I might not want to face either. But uh, when, I, when I sit back and, and look at the entire American League, the one team that scares me is the Astros. And the way things are going now, you know, maybe somebody can knock off the Astros for the Yankees, but if the Yankees, you know, right now the Yankees are in second place in terms of best record in the American League, they would get the easier first round. Uh, but I don't, you know, Mike, you've been around this a long time. I don't think you, like, maneuver yourself to play certain teams in the playoffs because that could end up biting you. But right now, I think it would be better for the team that finishes second because the matchup would be better. I, I, we were talking about it yesterday. I think a, a team not named the Astros in the American League, Michael, look at Seattle and, and look at how they've matched up against this Yankee team in the last couple of weeks. And, oh, by the way, I mean, the Yankees don't have an answer for Luis Castillo. Thank God they don't have to wa face him again potentially until October. But, you know, if you're going to throw Castillo at him two, maybe three times in a seven-game series, that could be maybe problematic. Yeah, the, I, I agree, Dan, but the one thing that doesn't worry me about Seattle, I don't like their offense. They don't so, yeah. you know, even, even when Castillo was pitching great, um, Cole matched them zero for zero, and then the game went to, you know, toward, toward the you know extra innings, I think that game was. So uh, I don't worry about them as much because they don't hit, but the Astros can hit, and they also have great pitching. So I think the Yankees will figure out a way to beat Seattle, but the Astros still scare me. But they'll get Julio back in those series, too. You know, Julio didn't face the Yankees either because he was on the shelf, and you know how good of a player he is. You know, forget about the tough weekend in Seattle, right? Forget about, you know, the struggles in this trip and what it's been. I, I took a step back from it, and I'll still look for the silver lining and the positive. And to me, more so than anything else, was Garrett Cole on Tuesday night. Uh, the fact that he went out there and he looked like ace Garrett Cole, the guy who we haven't seen probably in the last few weeks, I think that is something you take with you moving forward if you're a Yankee fan, no? I, I think you have to, Dan. If you don't believe in Garrett Cole, then you don't believe the Yankees give him the World Series because he's the key or one of the keys to them doing that. He's that good, uh, and he's got that kind of stuff. I think he's better when he gets through the first couple of innings throwing fastballs before he mixes in the other stuff. His fastball is electric, and the key with that is to locate it. When you locate it, 
he locates it, it's, it's almost an unhittable pitch. So uh, I still I still truly believe in him. Uh, and if Montas could actually pitch the way they think he could pitch, then the Yankees have a pretty good one, too, as well. But uh, it's funny the narrative out there that Max Scherzer, who I think is a great pitcher, is, is a much better big-game pitcher than, uh, than Garrett Cole. Somebody tweeted this out the other day. Every single statistic benefits Garrett Cole in postseason play over Max Scherzer. But, you know, the narrative, what the narrative is, because – Last year in the wild card game, right here on this field that I'm looking at right now, he got slapped around by the Red Sox. So you can't erase that. But I also say you can't erase what he did in the 2020 uh, postseason when he, you know, he carried them and pitched very, very well. I believe in him, and I think that he's one of the five best pitchers in baseball. Michael, switching gears, you guys have a really exciting broadcast on uh, Sunday night, right? Bringing uh, the captain back. Yeah. Yeah, I, you know, it's like, you know, we got a, a group text about a, a week and a half ago that said that, you know, Jeter's going to be um, in studio for the K-Rod cast on Sunday. And both Alex and I...